Hi, my name is Adrian. Welcome to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Audex and Vendineering. So without further ado, let's roll! So before we begin, I'd like to first say that this is more of an introductory piece. So if you're already familiar with uh, Audex rights as well as the rendering scene in general, well, this video is not for you. It's more like if you got a friend you want to introduce to Audex rights as well as the rendering scene in general, well, this is the video that you can throw it their way. So what is an Audex right? Well, historically, there is actually a difference in the terms Audex as well as Brevet. But for this video, I'm just going to treat them in a general sense. That is, an Audex ride is an event, an ultra long distance cycling event that is uh, sanctioned by its world governing body, the Audex Club Parisien. Uh, I hope I got the pronunciation of that right, but it's a French organization basically, so French pronunciation. <laughs> anyway, if you're already familiar with cycling events such as uh, Grand Fondos or Sportives or Charity Rides, or in some places you just generally call them cycling events, there are some similarities and some differences. So in terms of similarities, well, you've got an established route that you must follow. You have a starting point. From that starting point, you must follow the route until its end. And if you finish within a certain cut-off time, then, well, you finish, you succeed, congratulations, you might get a medal or a cert or maybe your cert has a timing certificate or something like that. Well, yeah, that's basically it, right? And then along the route, there may be feed stations or water stations where you can get food and uh, water and maybe medical support and stuff like that. Well. Audex rides are kind of similar but different as well. First of all, Audex rides are self-supported. Okay, that means you won't have things like police or traffic marshals along the route to guide you along. There won't be medical volunteers or you know people preparing food and water for you at the feed stations. Everything is self-sufficient. Now, this is part of the Audex, okay? Um, it doesn't only test your cycling proficiency, it also tests your self-sufficiency, you know? How independent and how well you take care of you and your bike during a ride. So that's one of the appeals and also maybe one of the things that scare people off Audexes, but um, that's another thing. So how do these Audex rides actually work? At the beginning, there is registration. So basically, uh, you may have registered in advance or you may have walked in and registered. The, the, the details of all that really depends on how the Audex club in your country handles it. But basically, once you're registered, you'll receive a brevet card. Now, this brevet card is an important document that you must have on your person at all times. And I'll go about that later in the video. But in addition to the brevet card, you may be given a cue sheet. Or if you weren't given one, then the details of the route may have been published online or, well, distributed in some other way but the details of that again depends a lot on how your local Audex club deals with it but generally you must already know the route or at least have some kind of document to show you the route at the beginning of the ride because there won't be people standing at junctions telling you where to turn and whatnot you're on your own okay now this isn't really a bad thing per se because um, 
If there are a lot of people riding, well, you can follow them. Also, it may be general practice to publish a GPX route which you can download and install in your Garmin or Wahoo or, or whatever cycling computer you use. But again, this is uh, highly Audex Club dependent, so it depends on the Audex Club in your country. They may only do Q sheets, they may only do GPX routes. Anyway, the point is, uh, you should already know the route beforehand. And okay, so you start the ride just like an ordinary cycling event. You, you ride along the route. Now, along the route, there will be checkpoints. Checkpoints are kind of similar to feed stations in the sense that you need to stop. There will be people there to stamp your brevet cards. Now, what they do is they stamp your card along with your time of arrival. Now, checkpoints have uh, starting times and ending times. Kind of like feed stations in events too. If you reach a feed station too late, they may recommend that you just hop onto the broom wagon because uh, you won't finish the ride in time. So checkpoints kind of follow the same philosophy where if you reach the checkpoint too late, you're out, that's it. Of course, there won't be a broom wagon waiting for you. You have to call a grab or ride or, you know, call someone to pick you up or maybe you just ride back to the starting point. Now, unlike feed stations, checkpoints aren't going to have people just handing out food or water. But then again, um, some Audex clubs may provide some something. I Well, again, like I said, that's entirely up to the Audex club. I, I know that for certain difficult rides, well, the Audex club itself may actually provide support you know, they may have a van or something carrying some water, but that's more of an exception rather than the rule. So anyway, once you're past your checkpoints, you continue along the route, you, depending on the length or distance of the ride, there may be more than one checkpoint. And if you successfully complete the ride in time, you get a final stamp at the finishing point. It is not compulsory under Audex rules to give participants medals when they complete the ride. It is totally up to the participant. Here's what the medal looks like. So this is a medal for 200 kilometers and for the years 2016 to 2019 so ACP changes the design every four years to coincide with their big engineering event Paris vs Paris which of obviously occurs every four years and that's it that's generally how an Audex ride works you can see it, how similar it is to events as well as how dissimilar it is. So why are people doing these rides? You know, 200 kilometers and that's just one of the shorter ones. I mean, there are shorter ones, but uh, well, in terms of, well, shall we say official capacity where, in, where, you, where your Audex ride can qualify for other things well 200 is the shortest okay and then after that you've got 300 kilometers 400 kilometers 600 kilometers and there's more why are people doing this well if if you're a runner you might think the same thing about marathons right you you just run 5 to 10 kilometers around your local neighborhood why are people running 42 kilometers and there are even longer ultra marathons that, that go as long as 160 kilometers. Why? And besides endurance sports, you've got guys who want to climb Mount Everest. You, basically, you got, you've got people who want to test their limit and see how far they go. So that's one reason why people join Audex, right? 
they want to test themselves. Another reason might be it's fun. <laughs> I don't know. Um, who would want to torture themselves for 600 kilometers on a bike that's two days, basically? Uh, I know some people find it fun. Like some people find running 42 kilometer full marathons fun. Some people like doing the full Ironman. They think it's fun. Well, that's another reason. Can't fault people for it. But anyway, uh, you get my point. This is an ultra endurance event. And just like any other ultra endurance event, whether it's running or swimming or climbing or whatever, there's the challenge. There's maybe the fun. Actually, yeah, it, it can be fun and addictive. <laughs> well, you know, different people, different strokes. So another reason why people do Audex rides is because they want to participate in some bigger event. Well, you see, not everyone can just simply register and join an Audex ride. The basic, the basic distances, which is 200 kilometers, 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers, and 600 kilometers, are the bare necessity to get you what is called the Super Randonneur Award, okay? Now, Super Randonneur Awards are seasonal. What, what, I, what I mean by that is basically that award, that recognition only applies to that randonneuring season. So if you are Super Randonneur for, let's say, 2018, then it only applies for 2018 rides so events longer than 600 things like 1000s 1002s 1004s and all that require a bare minimum super randonneur so there aren't many 1002s and above worldwide but the ones that are available can be pretty prolific for example, the biggest one is Paris vs Paris that happens every four years. It attracts like thousands of participants. And then there's a PAP, which is a Perth, Albany, Perth. And another one is a LEL, London, Edinburgh, London. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there, there's, there are a couple of ultra long distance prolific events and in order to actually participate in those you'd have to get super randonneur at the minimum and yeah that's basically it so having heard all this you want to give audex a try are you ready for it that's the question usually when people ask me that whether in person or on an internet forum my basic go-to response is, have you done Century Rides? If you're not familiar with a Century Ride, it's basically an event. Well, it may not even be an event. You might even do it solo or you might do it for fun with a group of friends. But anyway, a Century is essentially 100 miles or roughly 160 kilometers. Now, if you've already done Centuries and uh, you think, hey, that's Cool, I'd like to do that again. Well, 200 kilometers is just a century plus 40 kilometers. That's, that's basically the mindset that you need to get into when you are doing these long distance uh, ultra endurance events, whether it's cycling or running or whatever. You break it up into more familiar pieces. So the 200 is basically just a century plus 40. No sweat, right? Yeah, actually that's that's it. No sweat. Century plus 40. Now, if you haven't done centuries before, but let's say you've done over 100 kilometers of riding, well, I would say, yeah, you should be able to do an... You should be able to do a 200 kilometer Audex. Because um, a bike fitter once told me, once you go past approximately the 100 kilometer mark all kinds of 
discomfort and all kinds of things just start showing up you know from back pains shoulder pains neck pains whatever so if you are already pretty comfortable doing 100 plus then 200 should be fine now on the other hand if you haven't done 100 i'd suggest you build up to at least 100 first if you are beginner maybe you you just started cycling you've only done 10 kilometers 20 kilometers well you can build up first build up to 40 then from 40 maybe to 60 or 80 and from there build up to 100 plus then try a century and if you've done a century and you you think well that was tough but it's cool it's good training or it's good for fitness or you know you want to try more then yeah sure 200 kilometers is the next step give it a try i mean there's no harm you never know until you do it right so yeah that's the gist of it um and that's all for this video in upcoming videos i'm probably going to talk more about the randonneering scene and maybe talk about the different distances the 200s the 300s the 400s and the 600s and uh what goes into participating in these kind of rides what kind of strategies uh stuff like that so if you want to learn more please do leave a like on this video and consider subscribing so that you will know when my next video comes out so until then see you in the next video bye